Today, we want to talk about Moses and how God trained him to trust. Let's take a look. Exodus chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. We read this. So Moses returned to the Lord and said, Lord, why have you brought trouble on this people? Why is it that you have sent me? For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has done evil to this people. Neither have you delivered your people at all. Now, at this point in the story of Moses, things weren't going well for the prophet. After God dramatically called him to deliver the people of Israel, Moses confronted Pharaoh and hoped that God would open the doors and let Israel go from Egypt. But Pharaoh slammed the door shut. When Moses said, let my people go, Pharaoh said, I'll make them even more miserable. All of this made the people of Israel angry. And it confused and discouraged Moses. So Moses poured out his heart to God. That's a good thing to do. And Moses said something like this, Lord, why have you brought trouble on this people? Why did you send me? For Moses, God didn't make sense and nothing was going according to the plan. When you are confused and discouraged, it's good to pour out your feelings to God. But it's bad to forget God's promises. Back at the burning bush, God said, But I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go. No, not even by a mighty hand. So I will stretch out my hand and strike Egypt with all of my wonders, which I will do in its midst. And after that, he will let you go. That's from Exodus chapter 3, verses 19 and 20. You see, as far as God was concerned, everything was working according to plan. Even though God warned Moses, it seems that Moses hoped it would all happen easily. He hoped that he would ask, Pharaoh would say yes, and God would be glorified. But it didn't work the way Moses thought it might work. In this tough time, the same old fears came back to Moses. I'm not the man God should send. Maybe God won't come through. Pharaoh and the Egyptians are too strong. You see, Moses still had unbelief and a lack of focus on God. And that had to change, or at least improve. F.B. Meyer wrote this about this time in Moses' life. Quote, The agony of soul through which Moses passed must have been as death to him. He died to his self-esteem, to his castle building, to pride in his miracles, to the enthusiasm of his people, to everything that a popular leader loves. As he lay there on the ground before God, wishing himself back in Midian and thinking himself hardly used, He was falling as a grain of wheat into the ground to die, no longer to abide alone, but to bear much fruit. I love that quote from F.B. Meyer. You see, perhaps Moses thought that all the dying to himself was finished after 40 years of leading sheep in Midian. But it wasn't over. It never is. God will still use adversity to train us to trust him until the day we go to be with him in heaven. Now, if that's discouraging to you, come back to a trust in a loving God who knows you better than you know yourself and knows exactly when you need to be trained to trust him more.